Required Practical 1, Part B, Titration. The task is to determine the concentration of a sodium hydroxide solution using a standard solution of sodium hydrogen sulphate that we made in Part A. The first thing we need to do is to draw a suitable results table. Make sure you leave space for at least three titras. You can always add more if needed. Transfer about 100 centimetres cubed of the sodium hydrogen sulphate into a clean, dry beaker. This is the solution that we made up in part A. Use a small amount of the solution to rinse the burette. You then need to fill the burette with the solution. Use a funnel to do this to make it easier to pour in. Don't forget you're going to have to fill the jet space, this little area under the tap. If you forget to do that, your first titra will be lower than expected. Also, don't spend any time trying to get the volume onto zero. As long as it is somewhere on the scale, you're going to measure the difference, so don't waste time trying to zero the burette. Rinse the pipette with a small amount of the sodium hydroxide solution. Then using the pipette filler, you are going to pipette exactly 25 centimetres cubed of the sodium hydroxide solution. Let the pipette empty into a clean 250 centimetre cubed conical flask. Add two to three drops of phenylphthalein indicator to the conical flask and swirl. Record the initial burette reading in your table. Add the sodium hydrogen sulphate to the conical flask slowly, making sure you're adding it drop wise as you approach the end point. The end point for this titration will be a colour change from pink to colourless. Record the final burette reading in your table. Then repeat the titration until you have two concordant results. That's readings within 0.1 cm cubed of each other. Processing the results. The first thing to do is to make sure you indicate which are your concordant results. And then work out your average titra. For the calculation, we need to know how sodium hydrogen sulphate and sodium hydroxide will react with each other, so writing a balanced equation is the first step. I then find it very useful to write under each thing in the equation the information I know. The concentration of the sodium hydrogen sulphate we worked out in the first video, and it was 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. We know the volume of sodium hydrogen sulphate we've used because that was the, the average titra. So we know that the volume is 25.05. The concentration of the sodium hydroxide is unknown. That is what we're trying to work out. But the volume was the volume we used in the pipette, which was 25 centimetres cubed. So when I look at my information, the only one I can start with is this one. Because I've got a volume and a concentration, I can work out the moles. Don't forget when calculating the moles of sodium hydrogen sulphate that the volume must be in decimeters cubed, so must be divided by a thousand. From the equation, we can see that one mole of sodium hydrogen sulphate reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide. So the moles of sodium hydroxide are the same as the moles of sodium hydrogen sulphate. Once we've got this, we can now work out the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. The final answer is to three significant figures, and that is sufficient. Now, if this was a practical situation, you would go on and work out errors. In this video, we're just looking at the practical skills and the very basic calculations you would need to do at the end.